The frost is almost on the pumpkins this morning. To hear how cold it is and to see uh, an update on that little Richter guitar, stay tuned right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Thursday, September 29th, and as I said, the frost was almost on the pumpkin this morning. 36 degrees down here in this valley. I don't know what the surrounding areas are, but uh, it was chilly down here. <laughs> you can tell it inside the house, too. <laughs> it's a big house, and that concrete retains heat for a while on that concrete floor, but it doesn't take long for that cold to suck into that concrete, boy. And it is one hard house to heat. You can say, insulate it, insulate it. It's insulated. Trust me, I furred the walls out to six inches, and that's a big house to do that to. Put in new insulation, put in new windows. The attic has got a lot of blown-in insulation in it. It's already insulated pretty darn well. There's not much more I can do to that house other than, you know, somebody, you know, people say, well, just trench around it and put insulation so you've got a thermal break. Yeah, right. You come here and show me how you do that in a house like this. Uh, yeah, it's a huge house and there's tons of rooms and it would just it'd be easier to build a new house <laughs> than to try to put a thermal break in that concrete floor. Anyway, I'm not looking forward to cutting firewood. I actually hauled a small load of wood yesterday just in my uh, Kawasaki mule. Basically, I loaded up the back of the mule as full as I could get it because I had already cut some uh, wood earlier this month, actually, just opening up a trail. Uh, one big tree had fallen across the trail, so I cut that all up. I'm not looking forward to starting up that wood furnace because that just means solid cutting wood. I mean, for forever. Uh, I know, I know. Everyone's got a different solution to the problem, but, you know, sometimes you get yourself roped into a situation that you just can't get out of, and that's the situation I'm in. I mean, I could get out of it. I could move up to my rental retreat, but that's bringing in very good revenue right now. And uh, so, you know, and you could say, well, then just buy firewood. You know, trust me, you couldn't afford the firewood. The rental retreat would have to bring in three times as much money to, to buy the firewood I need to buy. That's why nobody else would heat this place with firewood because they're too lazy. <laughs> and I'm not trying to say that, you know, I'm not lazy. I mean, I get my lazy spells too. But trust me, it takes a lot of firewood to heat this house. And if I were lazy, there's not a chance on this earth I could do it. Because you burn a quart of wood every three days when the temperature's in the very low 30s to the mid-20s. Well, and if it gets below 20, uh, you'll burn a quart of wood. <laughs> in about two days. I'm not kidding. It's just unbelievable. I have the largest residential wood furnace that Central Boiler makes. The next furnace bigger is one you load with a forklift. And I regret not getting that one, actually. I know it sounds crazy, but I kind of regret not getting that big one. At least I have my bobcat, my splitter I made, and my dump trailer. So, you know, it's it's a lot of wo work cutting the wood, but for the, you know, f I, I would say half of it I can split with that splitter and put it in the trailer automatically with the splitter so I don't have to load it. The other half, you know, you always have small wood that you have to load by hand. So I would say there's at least half of it I can do with uh, mechanical means and the other half I have to do by hand. And trust me, just half of that much wood is a lot of wood. <laughs> <laughs> I know people think I'm exaggerating, but I trust me, I am not exaggerating. Yeah, the house temperature has already dropped down in the low to mid 60s, and my wife is freezing. She was begging me to move to someplace like Arizona or Florida or something today. She 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 would prefer Arizona, I think, because that's where Leon and his wife go every winter. You can't hardly do that either when you got all these animals and you got 
a place like this. If we lived in an apartment or lived, you know, in a house, we could probably do that. But in, in our situation, unless we sell this farm, which I don't want to do, we're just out of luck on that. <laughs> Oh, enough on that. It's just uh, fun thinking about all the work coming up. <laughs> fun in a sarcastic way. Got this baby put together yesterday and played it. Uh, pretty happy with it. I oiled it with some linseed oil. It makes it look a little bit better. Still not exactly showroom quality, but compared to the way it did look and compared to the way it came into the shop, it's like a million dollars now. <laughs> And it is playable. Now, I'll tell you right now, the neck is loose on this. It does need a neck reset. That's what it needs because the neck's loose. But again, this is a wall hanger. I put extra light strings on it and it seems to be holding tune. I barely had to tune it this morning. So that's good enough for this guitar unless he decides he wants something more. Uh, and right now he hasn't decided that. And you know, you got to go by what the customer says. You can't go by what you want or what I want. You got to go by what the customer wants. So there you go. So here we, we'll turn the camera down and maybe play it a little bit for you. this usually has a song something like this to go with it I sell the morning paper sir my name is Jimmy Brown and everybody knows that I'm the newsboy of this town you can hear me yelling morning star running along the street I got no hat upon my head shoes upon my feet guitar you know it doesn't have the best sound in the world but it doesn't sound bad either you know and I've got the intonation set pretty well the bridge actually fits the top fairly well the little feet on the very far ends don't make contact but the main portion of the bridge makes good contact I uh, buffed out the tailpiece which was just solid rust I mean solid rust I buffed it out to shiny uh, metal and then I put lacquer over that put about three coats of lacquer over it to try to keep it from rusting again um, It's going to be a, a nice, you know, just a real nice looking wall hanger is really what it's going to amount to And just so you know, you will see a full video series on the Richter guitar and uh, That will be coming up down the road. It all depends on how busy we are and how quick Emory can get the videos out and sometimes I put out videos too as you know mine aren't quite as detailed as hers are but uh, I get them out too we just have to wait and see how that all unfolds tomorrow will be shop talk which will be uh, 8 a.m. my time so uh, I would appreciate it if you could join me uh, live that would be really really nice I would love to see you on there live if you do join us make some comments and uh, if you have any questions during the live shop talk you can put question marks in front of your question then type out your question that way I can see it and find it easier so uh, I would love to have you join us tomorrow and post your questions if you would like to do that Meanwhile, if you have some particular topic or something you'd like me to discuss tomorrow, put that in the comments of this video and I'll read those comments yet today or in the morning and I'll be sure to try to talk about those things on the live shop talk tomorrow. I want to give you the ability to participate as much as possible in the live shop talks and so far we're having pretty good turnouts. I think we got close to 200 people live on the last one and and we have had as high as 300 live on some of the shop talks. So I would love it if you could join me. We'll see you tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock. Thanks for tuning in.